Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Michael Lindell, also known as My Pillow Guy? Another question here, can I discuss the idea of canceling those who promote the myth of the stolen election? That's something that has been alleged in this case, that Michael Lindell was canceled. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll go through the background of Michael Lindell, and then I'll move to my analysis. Michael James Lindell was born in Minnesota on June 28, 1961. After attending college, Lindell tried to make a living in several different ways. He started a carpet cleaning business. He tried card counting in Las Vegas. They threw him out of the casino. He raised pigs. He started a lunch wagon business. He became a bartender and bought a bar. He would later say this wasn't a good idea because he was addicted to cocaine at that time. In 2004, we see that Lindell claims that he had a dream from God in which Lindell is given the idea for a product called my pillow. This is a pillow that holds its shape. He was able to grow a company based on this and other products into a substantially sized manufacturer. He became a self-made millionaire while addicted to drugs. He eventually started using crack cocaine, which ultimately led to financial problems, including losing his house and it would cost him his marriage. In 2008, he was up for two weeks straight his drug dealer wouldn't sell him any more crack cocaine until he slept, probably just following the crack dealer code of ethics. That crack dealer was okay with some risks of the profession, like being convicted of a felony or being killed in a turf dispute, but violating the crack dealer code of ethics was not going to happen. There is no way he was about to lose his crack dealer license, like he was just going to throw away all the time he spent earning his master's degree in crack dealing. It would be 10 more months before Lindell would stop using substances, and he has not used them since. His desire for cocaine, according to him, was just gone. Lindell credits prayer as setting him free from substances. His pillow business continued to grow. He spent over $100 million on infomercials over a six-year period. The company's revenue reached almost $300 million a year. He did run into a few problems. The state of California said he made unsubstantiated health claims, and the Better Business Bureau did not like his idea of a never-ending two-for-one deal. They downgraded his rating from an A- to an F. In August of 2016, his life would change again when he met Donald Trump, who at that time was running for President of the United States. Lindell was a big fan right away. When he met Donald Trump, he said it felt like a divine appointment. He would say, when I walked out of that office, I decided I was going all in. After Trump was elected, Lindell would say Trump was the greatest president in history and chosen by God. In 2019, Lindell received an honorary doctor of business from Liberty University. Lindell has a financial stake in a company that makes a plant extract named Oleodrin. Lindell has promoted it as a cure for COVID-19, even though there is no evidence that this extract cures COVID. In one interview, he said that he found out about the extract and called some physician who said it was the real deal. He also claims there are studies supporting its effectiveness that involve a thousand people, but he can't say who conducted the study and he does not have a copy of it. Perhaps the tooth fairy ran away with it. Lindell supported President Trump even after Trump's defeat in the 2020 presidential election. After the loss, Lindell financed Trump's attempts to overturn the results of the election. In addition, he supported this claim that Antifa members dressed up as Trump people during the January 6, 2021 riot at the Capitol. Moving to January 15, 2021, we see that Lindell walked into the West Wing of the White House carrying a document that could be read a little bit in a photo that was taken. It appeared to be referring to the Insurrection Act and martial law. 
This suggests that Lindell was going to talk to Trump or did talk to Trump about invoking that act and declaring martial law. Unsatisfied with his current number of conspiracy theories, Lindell has also promoted the idea that the voting machine companies conspired with foreign operators to defeat Trump. It seems possible that he will be involved in a few lawsuits as a result of this, but I'm not aware of any at the time I'm making this video. Lindell was featured in a video that he produced called Absolute Proof, which has been banned from several social media platforms. He bought time on the One American News Network to air the video. They put this massive disclaimer in front of it. The video continues promoting the myth of a stolen election. Every claim in the video has already been disproven several times. What could be going on in a situation like this? So here I'm talking in general, not about Mike Lindell. Sometimes people give credit for their success to a higher power. This is not unusual. We see this in many belief systems. This can, however, be taken to an extreme. If they are successful in some endeavor, even if that success appears to be from their own efforts, they still believe that it came from an external entity. They are being rewarded for their faith, or they were selected to be a great spiritual leader or savior. Similarly, when things are not going well, they believe they are being punished by a divine entity. What we see here is that the person feeds their narcissism. Instead of somebody who is not successful moving over and being successful, they make a much more powerful transition from normal to chosen for a divine purpose. Their success is a sign that they have a higher calling, not the result of hard work, innovativeness, risk-taking, or luck. The more money they make, the more it proves that the higher power supports them. Therefore, any action, even those that involve making false claims to earn more money, can be easily justified. Moving back to Michael Lindell, he has experienced a decrease in orders for his pillows. He said that he has been canceled. Now, it's not clear if he's really been canceled or not. There are some reports that say the sales have simply decreased. That's why stores are not ordering. But this brings up an interesting topic. I think what this whole stolen election myth has taught us is that a non-negligible portion of the population has very poor critical thinking skills and a high degree of conviction that their opinions are correct. They believe what they want to believe. If the evidence doesn't support that belief, they pretend the evidence actually exists. In one sense, it is intellectual laziness. People are moving to one extreme or the other without trying to understand the point of view that other people have. The same mistake can be made when evaluating these conspiracy theorists. They get dismissed as deranged or hopeless. We see people who are saying the answer to this problem is to cancel these individuals, to buy into the cancel culture. The problem is that cancel culture is a left-wing conspiracy theory. There is no evidence that cancel culture is helpful in any way. So essentially, members of the cancel culture would have us believe that we should take the stolen election myth, a right-wing conspiracy theory, and allow it to push us into buying into cancel culture, a left-wing conspiracy theory. The idea is to fight nonsense, I guess with a different type of nonsense. Both theories are anti-science. Conservatives and liberals are equally likely to buy into conspiracy theories. Research has shown this repeatedly. Yet each side has said that the other side is the only one that has conspiracy theorists or it's the only one that has dangerous conspiracy theorists. The more people who invest in one extreme, the more people who invest in the opposite extreme. Increased membership in one pushes people to the other. So in a way, these conspiracy theories support each other. They help grow the other theories' membership. Few people seem to have the ability to avoid intellectual laziness and critically evaluate the situation. Few people are willing to take on both types of anti-scientific nonsense at the same time. They don't want to challenge both sides simultaneously. It's more comfortable to be in a club, to be in one camp or the other. Few people want to do the hard work of trying to analyze why people believe these claims in the first place. Many of these people were normal at one time, 
they formed their false beliefs due to many factors, which we need to understand to prevent this from happening in the future. Many conspiracy theories, like the false narrative of a stolen election, will probably dissipate someday. They kind of come and go to some degree, but it takes a long time. But the lack of critical thinking skills will remain. It will lie in wait for the next time conditions facilitate its return. Those are my thoughts on Mike Lindell and the whole idea of canceling people who believe in the stolen election myth. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.